All right, we've got a fun article up on ESPN.com, uh, something that uh, myself, Tim Bontemps, and Kevin Peltland kind of uh, whipped together, I guess, this past weekend. And probably the, the I love these articles as far as how we do these, as far as a collaboration where we're kind of going back and forth um, with certain ideas based on the concept of the article. And, and, and what we have up there is the NBA and the Player Association have until December 15th to opt out of the current collective bargaining agreement um, and do a new CBA that would start next July. Uh, I think either I think one of the sides will do it. Um, that doesn't mean that we're going to be in a lockout. Um, revenue is strong. We've got a new TV contract coming up, but I do think there are certainly certain tweaks. Um, and when you have the opportunity to do so, you are going to do that. So basically what we were tasked to do was take a look at the CBA, especially in a day and age where players are, ask, are asking to be traded. And we saw the Simmons, Ben Simmons situation last year where he held out. We don't know what happens, what will happen with Kevin Durant. But look at the CBA and what changes could be made to it. I, I think the one thing that is magnified and probably incorrectly to an extent is when a player asks to be traded. Guys, you can go back for the last 30 years. Players have asked to be traded. Do the optics look bad? Yes. You can go back to Stefan Marbury in 1999 who asked to be traded out of Minnesota and was traded to Brooklyn. I mean, there is a litany of players that can, that can be traded. So I think there's important to separate the two categories, and we I guess we call it player empowerment, right? Players are asked to be traded who are under contract. We can probably, we can put Kevin Durant in that conversation. Then there are players who ask to be traded and do not show up for training camp like we saw last, last year in Ben Simmons. That is a one-off. That does not happen. Right? Like the commissioner said it. I agree with the commissioner. Like I had never saw a player hold out of training camp. Players have gone to tramp. Maybe they've been disruptors like Jimmy Butler was back in Minnesota. But if you ask to be traded, you are 99% of the time reporting there. So do we have an image issue here? I think the image issue is basically we live in a world of social media of Twitter and Instagram, of news 24 hours a day. So when a player asks to be traded, it is more magnified than it was in 1999 or 2002 or 2003. I don't see the league all of a sudden putting in harsher penalties if a player asks to be traded because I'll give you an example. Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell signs a... Rookie Max extension in Utah in 2020, the offseason. The, the thought process was that this is going to be a team that can, that can contend for a championship. You make the Rudy Gobert trade. You basically wave the white flag to basically being one of the top teams in the Western Conference. I understand it. So why doesn't Donovan Mitchell have the right to go in there, Danny Ainge, and ask to be traded now? That's not what I signed up for. Um, teams can trade players at any time. There are no players except for Bradley Beal that has a no trade clause in their contract. There are a few that have a one-year bird restriction that can veto trade. So it's a two-way street here when a, a, a team can trade a player and that player has the right to go in and ask to be traded if this is not what he agreed to sign up for or if that team is going in a different direction. So the consensus is I don't see any rules that are being that are going to be put in place here in this next CBA as far as maybe we do a tweak a little bit maybe from a financial standpoint. Maybe it's more than $50,000 for missing practice. But Ben Simmons essentially left about $20 million on the table to make a stand in Philadelphia. And I know they settled and he, he got back a small amount of what was owed to him here. But as the commissioner said, like they have a contract. If you don't report for work, you're not going to get paid for it here. So I don't see how you can put more financial restrictions in place when Ben Simmons is losing $360,000 and Kevin Durant would lose a half a million dollars for every game he missed here. Like what else are you going to 
to, to do. And we go through it. I mean, we go through it as far as, and there's a consensus there that none of us feel like all of a sudden we're going to get some new rules. We're not, you're not going to get new rules as far as players missing games and the contract not being guaranteed. You might see some rules when it comes to a player missing a certain amount of games and maybe they're not eligible for all NBA. Maybe they're not all eligible for MVP or defensive player of the year here. So I think we just have to be cautious when we start throwing around, oh my God, Kevin Durant has to be traded. Ben Simmons did the year before. Like all of a sudden we got to put new rules in. No, this has been going on for 30 years. It's not going to change and nor should it. The player has the right to ask for a trade, as I said. I think you have to do it in a tasteful manner as far as what we're seeing. And, and certainly the, the, the Durant situation is a little bit of haywire as far as how much everything is public, which is not ha- helping Kevin Durant here. But from the, the, the league and the player association, I don't think would agree upon, like all of a sudden we're putting in revamped rules as far as players asking to be traded because the argument would be like, well, wait a minute, Houston can trade so-and-so, the Nets can trade so-and-so, and they don't have to go in and ask that permission. So I think we have to be cautious. I think it's, hey, we talk on a lot of things. I think we could see the extension rules changed. Um, I use Jalen Brown as a good example. Players that um, signed team-friendly extensions, and now you're kind of restricted. You're in a two-year holding pattern until Brown will become a free agent in 2024. I make the argument we're saying like, hey, why can't Brown sign an extension for 30% of the salary cap in 2024, why can't Jalen Brown sign an extension that has all NBA MVP defensive player of the year language in his extension that can boost his contract to 35% if he hits that criteria, similar to what we see with rookies. They can do that. Zion Williamson did it. Darius Garland did it. John Morant, they have that written in there. Why can't a player sign an extension who's super max eligible to have that language in there? Or, and why the, the restriction rules are a lot better than they were. Why can't you sign for the, that percentage? Because we saw it with Zach Levine last year. He couldn't sign. He had to basically wait out this year, which may, what happens if Chicago would have lost him? He would, they would have been able to lock him up here. So a lot of interesting stuff in there. We talk about the luxury tax. Maybe the tax rules are expanded as far as the brackets, right? We're seeing teams right now not using roster spots because the, the luxury tap tax essentially acts as a hard cap. If you're, um, let's say the Miami Heat, you're not gonna sign two players here because you're going to go into luxury tax. If you're Cleveland, you have basically drawn a line in the sand when it comes to Colin Sexton because you're going to in a luxury tax. What happens if we expand the tax bracket or if we say a team like Cleveland or Miami goes into luxury tax, you're still going to get a portion of the $17 million in tax distribution. Or a team last year could have gotten the portion of the $10 million tax distribution. So it's a fun article. Check it out on ESPN.com. We go into a lot of different kind of scenarios here. Certainly the player empowerment portion of it is something to keep an eye on. Um, as far as what happens, I will say this. The worst thing for the Players Association is Kevin Durant not to show up to training camp. I think it will basically th- th- screw them when it comes to new talks because I think there's a deal to be made. But I think if Durant doesn't show up, now it's okay. Now it's not a one-off. Now who's that next player next year? Let's ask for more things, which I don't think the league has to do. I think the rules are in place already from a financial element where you're going you're going to lose your salary. You don't come to work, you're going to lose your salary. I mean that's I mean if if guys want to basically throw it out out the window and and basically tarnish their image, then what else can you do there? So, um, check it out on espn.com. Uh, hopefully everyone is doing good. Um, it's a good article. kind of gives you a little bit of a sneak peek on what some things could be changed. Certainly we do focus a lot on that player empowerment, um, which I think is basically overblown right now just because we live in this media world where everything is so magnified. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.